Jim, Andre the Giant was one of wrestling's greatest attractions, yet I believe he won only one world title for less than a minute. (laughs) I think Andre would have been a great world champion. If you were the booker, how would you have booked an Andre world title run in a territory? Not at all. (laughs) Well, explain. Not at all. (laughs) Not at all, PhD. No, Andre was exactly the guy that you didn't want to have the world title, which is exactly the reason why he never had the world title, because then how's he ever going to lose it? You, the, the, I think the, one of the things that was done right in wrestling was Andre the Giant's career. And even though we know, yes, if, if he liked you and he wanted to help you get over in a territory and he was being paid fairly by the promoter, etc., he, he, you could slam him. And he'd sell for you. Or if he didn't, you know, he might be a little tougher. Um, But overall, the number of people that beat him, as far as anybody knows, the people in Mexico, all they know is that he got beat by Kinect. And then then obviously they've heard about WrestleMania 3. And the people in Japan. All they know is he got beat by Oki that one, you know, whatever. Then and then and then they've heard about WrestleMania three. All, you know, it, he did so few jobs and did them right and did them only to the right people. Um, that he still had the aura that they could promote Hogan and Andre as the, even though he, fuck it, they had the match in the WWF. Uh, you know what? Seven years before, five years before, whatever the case may be. Um. It, it still it still meant so much, and the fact that Hogan beat him that was for the most of the the English speaking audience first time they'd ever seen anybody beat Andre the Giant, and he never needed the title. He was the highest paid wrestler in the world after after Bruno was right is about that time. He was also um, the most famous mainstream name for a decade. All you all you would do if you put a title on Andre is put your title on a guy that will diminish the title because you can't beat him to take it off of him. So is he going to hold it forever? And also, who wants to see him lose it? Who thinks he's going to lose it? The whole psychology of that, when you have an attraction like that, that's why you always saw Andre standing next to Bruno shaking hands or Andre standing next to Backlund shaking hands with the belt or Andre standing next to Hulk shaking hands with it. It's, it's the champion and the icon and you don't cross pollinate that and Bruno Sammartino offered to Vince McMahon senior to do a job to Andre in a dream match so they could do a stadium and Vince senior said, fuck you. I'm not having that match because neither one of you, or at least one of you will come out lessened. And it wasn't just because Bruno and Pedro didn't draw, you know, <laughs> it wasn't even about being a baby face match. It was, you would never put your two heroes in that situation. So no, and then Andre could be a tag team champion, but even then it was only happened a couple of times. I think Ian Dusty won the mid South tag title in the Superdome one time, but then they vacated it. They just wanted a happy feel good thing and probably, and to get dusty over stronger. Just if you won something and you were partners with Andre, the giant, you were a huge fucking star. And then it, it, it didn't matter if you never defended the things. Well, it, did he do a thing with the Samoans with somebody for the belt one time up there? But, I mean, you know, how, how much more can I articulate this? The last thing that Andre needed was not only the world title, but any title. He didn't need it. You know, I know everyone's gone crazy and been effusive about that Andre the Giant documentary on HBO. I thought it was so overrated, and it drove me crazy, the major historical inaccuracies in there. Everyone seems to look past that. Everyone's like, oh, well, Vince and Hogan lie. Or, well, Shane doesn't know any better, so he just says these things. But yeah. Man, this David Shoemaker kid in this thing. Who, Do we know who that is yet? He's, Have from, we, he's from Louisville, according to Travis Heckle. He's from Louisville, and he writes for Bill Simmons, or used to write for Bill Simmons as the masked man, from what I've been what? told. And he clearly doesn't I, know a I, fucking thing about professional thought, wrestling. because. Well, well, wait a minute. Hold on, cowboy. I thought they had just got somebody to, to play a wrestling historian i've never heard of this guy i don't know him if he's here in this town well it's a re- part of wrestling history i've never 
encountered in my studies of wrestling history, like Andre the Giant as the touring heel attraction who would go into each town and fight the top <laughs> baby face. When the fuck did that ever happen? Well, they got that from the match with Lawler, ignoring the fact that Law that, that they had pictures of and everything, but Lawler was a fucking heel at that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it's just but, that, that's the thing. I, I Well, I, I, I wasn't... Crap. I wasn't as offended as you were because it was cool to get to see the story told and be it on HBO and get to see all that old footage. And I just tuned out. Obviously, everybody knows Hogan's full of shit. And Vince was trying to perpetuate the, the – so I can't fault him for that, trying to perpetuate the myth of his greatest matchup. And, and yeah, and Shane just really – you know, he was 12 then and nobody was telling him the truth or whatever the fuck. But, and the, the fake wrestling expert. But still, so half of it was good because you got to see the footage and everything. Eh, that doesn't do it for me. A documentary isn't good because the footage is cool. You can appreciate the footage, but if the whole narrative is fucked and it's a documentary, yeah. then fuck you. That's what it is. <laughs> but he had a fantastic story, and uh, I encourage everybody to get the graphic novel Andre the Giant Closer to Heaven by my collaborators in Behind the Curtain, uh, Brandon Easton and Dennis Medry. Closer to Heaven, possibly closer to the truth than the HBO documentary. Yeah. But- <laughs>